what we've seen and what is of real concern to us is in increasingly aggressive actions by the government in Beijing uh, directed at Taiwan, uh, raising tensions in the Straits. And we have a commitment uh, to Taiwan under the Taiwan Relations Act, uh, a bipartisan commitment that's existed for, for many, many years to make sure that Taiwan has the ability to defend itself and to make sure uh, that we're sustaining peace and security in the Western Pacific. Uh, we stand behind uh, those commitments. And all I can tell you is it would be a serious mistake uh, for anyone to try to change the existing status quo by force. Serious mistake. These are two words that the People's Republic of China cannot afford to ignore. As it tries to aggressively chase its geopolitical ambitions in the Western Pacific. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken has issued a stern warning to China for its possible military actions against Taiwan. A statement that has irked Beijing. This is the world's new battleground, South China Sea. Just days before Blinken's remarks, the U.S. State Department had issued new guidelines for the U.S. government interactions with their Taiwanese counterparts. The idea to encourage closer contacts and deepen the unofficial relationship between the two nations. The statement read, The guidance underscore Taiwan as a vibrant democracy and an important security and economic partner that is also a force for good in the international community. Taiwan welcomes the move. As US-Taiwan ties dominated the world headlines on April 12th, Taipei reported that a record number of Chinese military jets flew into its air defense zone on Monday. The 25 aircraft included fighters and nuclear-capable bombers flew in an area close to the Pratas Islands, known locally as the Dongsha Islands. The Pratas Islands are a group of atolls, coral reefs and sea banks located between China, Taiwan and the Philippines. They lie about 275 miles from Kaohsiung, the municipality in southern Taiwan that administers them but are located just 170 miles from Hong Kong, putting them in easy reach of the People's Liberation Army. The Chinese Communist Party considers Taiwan a renegade province, and it issues thinly veiled threats against countries that recognize it as a sovereign state. Reports of China trying to capture the island started emerging last year prompting Taiwan to begin patrolling the area with its F-16s. Tensions escalated once again after Taiwan spotted Chinese drones circling the Taipei-controlled Pratas Islands. Taiwan has warned China that it may open fire if these unmanned flying machines enter the country's restricted waters or airspace. So why does China want to control the South China Sea? Why is it such a hotly contested region? Well, China claims most of the South China Sea as its own, including the oil and gas resources hidden beneath. Its aggression in the South China Sea is not new.
尽最大努力，争取和平统一的前景。因为以和平的方式实现统一，对两岸同胞和全民族最有利。Taiwan, officially known as the Republic of China, has been governed independently from mainland China since 1949. At the end of the Chinese Civil War, the defeated nationalists retreated to Taiwan and made it their seat of government. The victorious communists began ruling the mainland. However, China continues to see the democratic self-ruled island as part of its territory, threatening to use force if Taiwan ever formally declares independence. In 2019, Chinese President Xi Jinping declared that Taiwan's unification with the mainland is inevitable. He also said the use of force will not be ruled out. We do not agree to abandon the use of force. We maintain all necessary precautions. The threat is external forces and few. 台独分裂分子及其分裂活动，绝非针对台湾同胞。Taiwan has its own democratically elected government and is home to 23 million people. The island considers itself a sovereign state with its own currency, political, and judicial systems. It has refused to become a part of China under its one country, two systems offer of autonomy, but has never declared formal independence from the mainland. Taiwan's history with China meant that it has long been suspicious of the mainland. China's neighbor took measures as soon as the news of the mysterious Wuhan virus broke out. It started inspecting passengers arriving from the epicenter on December 31, 2019, and in February 2020, it banned all visitors from the mainland far earlier than other countries. So far, Taiwan has reported just above a thousand cases. President Tsai Ing-wen advocates a Taiwanese identity separate from China and is seen as traditionally pro-independence. In 2020, she vocally supported the Hong Kong protesters in her campaign for re-election. On June 30th last year, China's parliament passed a controversial new security law for Hong Kong, which makes it easier to punish protesters and reduces the city's autonomy. Under the new law, Beijing can set up special police units in Hong Kong to punish crimes considered a threat to the mainland, with some crimes carrying a penalty of life in jail. Taiwan launched a new office to process applications by Hong Kong nationals seeking asylum, a move that must have irked Xi Jinping. So the question is: Has China set its sights on Taiwan after subduing Hong Kong? Is Taiwan prepared to counter China's aggression? Taiwan's armed forces, though dwarfed by China's, are in the midst of a modernization program to offer a more effective deterrent, including the ability to hit back. Taiwan unveiled a new amphibious warfare ship recently. It can be used to land troops and will boost their supply lines to vulnerable islands offshore China and in the South China Sea, long considered easy targets for China. The 10,600-ton Yushan has been named after Taiwan's tallest mountain. While Taiwan's air force has benefited from big-ticket items like new and upgraded F-16s, the Navy is President Tsai Ing-wen's next focus. With submarines in production and a launch of the first of a fleet of highly maneuverable stealth corvettes, Taiwan has also been testing new surface-to-surface -surface missiles, which its media says have the ability to strike deep inside China. 
potentially giving the island the ability to attack far off Chinese air bases and command centers. The US has continued to provide Taiwan with military assistance, something that has deeply angered China. While Washington has no formal diplomatic ties with Taipei, it has continued to uphold informal political ties and the island's strongest global backer. The United States has been strongly opposing China's bullying in the region. Against the backdrop of rising tensions in the South China Sea, the US and the Philippines have started a joint military exercise. Though the two-week program that began from April 12th is an annual training event between the two nations, this year the timing is crucial. The countries are proceeding with the exercises after Manila accused China of territorial incursions by hundreds of its vessels, manned by militias in the South China Sea. Just before the drill started, China sent its first aircraft carrier, the Liaoning, in the South China Sea. The move came after a U.S. Navy expeditionary strike group fronted by the aircraft carrier USS Theodore Roosevelt and amphibious assault ship USS Macon Island conducted exercises in the region. Look at this photograph. On April 11th, the U.S. Navy released a photo of one of its guided missile destroyers, the USS Mustin, sailing near the Chinese carrier, with the ship's commanders looking on. A move that experts believe was designed to send a clear message to Beijing. Unlike in previous years, the Balikatan Exercises 2021 will not be open to the public as part of safety protocols to limit the spread of coronavirus. This is the Whitsun Reef, an exclusive economic zone of the Philippines. On April 13th, the country said it had summoned Beijing's top envoy in Manila to press for Chinese ships to immediately leave the Whitsun Reef in the South China Sea, describing the escalating row as a source of regional tension. China, however, has said the fishing boats were just sheltering from rough seas and that no militia were aboard. But what about this evidence? The Philippine military had documented illegal man-made structures on Union banks in the Spratly Islands in the South China Sea, near areas where hundreds of Chinese vessels were spotted in March. In another incident, on April 10th, the pipeline armed forces said that it was investigating a report that Chinese military boats pursued a civilian vessel carrying Filipino journalists in the disputed South China Sea. A television crew from Philippine Broadcaster was traveling to 2nd Thomas Shoal in the contested Spratly Islands when their vessel was allegedly chased by a Chinese Coast Guard boat and two attack craft. Tensions over the resource-rich sea have spiked in recent weeks after hundreds of Chinese vessels were detected at Whitsun Reef, which is also in the Spratly Archipelago. China, which claims almost the entirety of the sea, has refused repeated appeals by the Philippines to withdraw the vessels. Why is China so desperate to control the South China Sea? Let's delve into its complex history. In China, it is called the South China Sea, in Vietnam, the East Sea, but it's officially known as South China Sea. It's one of the most contested regions of the world. The Western Pacific Ocean comprises of several archipelago clusters of mostly uninhabited islands, atolls and reefs. Most of these are located in two island chains, the Paracel Archipelago, contested by China, Taiwan and Vietnam, and the Spratly Islands, disputed between China, Taiwan, Vietnam, the Philippines, Malaysia and Brunei. Surrounded by waters teeming with fish, the lucrative region is often caught in fishery disputes. 
strategically placed on a global trading route, one-third of the world's maritime shipping passes through it, carrying over $3 trillion in trade each year. 80% of China's energy imports and 39.5% of its total trade passes through the South China Sea. The vast sea is also known to be rich in oil and gas resources that can help meet the rising energy demands of nearby countries. Beijing claimed sovereignty over nearly all the sea using a map from the 1940s before the separation with Taiwan. It bases its claim on the U-shaped nine-dash line etched by a Chinese geographer. However, this historical rights argument has been challenged by many, including Vietnam, that says it has ruled over both the Paracels and the Spratlys since the 17th century. Vietnam's coastline bordering the South China Sea is over 3,000 kilometers long. In 1974, the Chinese seized the parcels from Vietnam, killing more than 70 Vietnamese troops. Vietnam claims ancestral sovereignty over the archipelago and, like the Philippines, has accused China of harassing its ships on multiple occasions. Malaysia and Brunei also lay claim to territory in the South China Sea that falls within their economic exclusion zones, as defined by UN CLOSE the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea. But all of them are concerned by China's military might. And now the US, Japan and Indonesia are ramping up pressure on Beijing over its activities in South China Sea. The increased military activities and reckless commercial fishing have taken a heavy toll on the region's biodiversity. The lack of communal maritime management has prompted concerns about overfishing. The South China Sea is considered a global hotspot for biodiversity. The region has some of the highest marine biodiversity on Earth, with 571 known species of coral reef alone. Imagine what happens to its ecology if countries try to make artificial islands here. China has built an estimated 3,200 acres of artificial islands, most of which are located in the Spratly Islands archipelago. Dredging or excavations carried out underwater cause coral reefs to break. The construction disturbs ecosystems by changing wave patterns and disrupting the migration corridor of many species. What impact will the escalating conflict have on the fragile marine ecosystem of the South China Sea? The coral reefs are dying, and no one seems to care. China Coast Guard, China Coast Guard, 5302. This is Indonesian Coast Guard calling you over. This is China Coast Guard, on the Yes, sir. As information, sir, you are in Indonesian waters. Yes, sir, you are in Indonesian waters, sir. Please move away and go back to your territory, sir. China has an indisputable sovereignty over the island in South China Sea under adjacent waters and enjoys sovereign rights and the jurisdiction in the relevant. Did you hear that? This is an incident from 2019, when an Indonesian patrol ship confronted a Chinese Coast Guard vessel. China has an indisputable sovereignty over the island in South China Sea, under adjacent waters, and enjoys sovereign rights and the jurisdiction in the relevant. Like other nations around the South China Sea, Indonesia too had deployed fighter jets and warships to patrol islands near the disputed waters. The fishing-rich region around the Natuna Islands, which border the South China Sea, is claimed by China, despite competing claims from other Southeast Asian nations, including Vietnam, the Philippines and Malaysia. This is just one example of China's aggressive behavior, but more and more countries are forging closer ties to counter China. 
For instance, Japan is helping the Philippines in patrolling the region. China and Japan have a difficult political history, with ties strained by the legacy of Japan's World War II aggression and conflicting claims over a group of islets. In order to counter China and South China Sea, Japan has been helping the Philippines in many ways. In 2017, two Japanese military surveillance aircraft were given to Manila to patrol vital sea lanes. While in 2016, the Philippines and Japanese Coast Guards held an anti-piracy exercise at the mouth of South China Sea. A day after United Nations-backed tribunal declared China has no historic rights in the area. The International Tribunal invalidated China's claim to 90% of the South China Sea and found that China had violated the Philippines' sovereign rights in its exclusive economic zone. The geographic region has become the biggest maritime flashpoint of the world and how the South China Sea situation plays out will be critical for India too. Indians have sailed these waters for well over 1500 years and nearly 200 billion dollars worth of Indian trade passes through the South China Sea. Chinese dominance can hinder India's free and open navigation prospects in the region. Last December, an Indian warship was dispatched to Vietnam to deliver humanitarian aid and naval drills were organized on its return voyage. India has been very vocal about settling the dispute through peaceful means. On March 12th this year, the leaders of the United States, India, Australia and Japan, countries together known as the Quad, held the first summit pledging to work together for a free and open Indo-Pacific and to cooperate on maritime and cybersecurity in the face of challenges from China. Building a strong coalition that will be a bulwark against China's ambition to dominate the continent and its oceans. It's up to Beijing now to rethink its aggressive strategies.